Today's video, we are looking at the 7900 Golden Rabbit Edition. Yeah, Golden Rabbit Edition for the Year of the Rabbit in China, which made sense when this was a China-only launch, but now it's becoming available worldwide at a price of $549, official from AMD starting February 27th. We're also gonna get a whole bunch of uh, new cooler models and all that from various board partners. Power Color sent me my review sample today. I have the Power Color Hellhound GRE, and I have it up against the Power Color Red Devil 7800 XT, both running at their uh, out of the box settings. Now, uh, with that in mind, uh, it's important to think about okay, so why am I comparing these two graphics cards? Because again, at $549, if you're buying an AMD GPU for around $500, these are both worth considering. The 7800 XT is is available at its $500 MSRP on a lot of models. So if the 7900 GRE is only $50 more, that's only 10% more money. So the question is really, does the 7900 GRE deliver at least 10% more performance uh, to make it at least roughly even performance scaling? Or is it offering much better values, offering more than 10% more performance or less? In other words, is one of these obviously better? And in general, how good are these GPUs right now? Uh, because I'm gonna be running on them in the latest games We'll look at various ray tracing workloads. We'll look at 1080p, 1440p, 4K. And at 4K, we're not just going to crank it to ultra and say they can't do it. We'll try reducing settings, using upscaling, finding uh, how you might actually use these graphics cards. And as just a random side note, AMD is also officially embargoed information for the same time frame as this video, uh, just about the 7700 XT having its price cut to 419 US dollars, at least for some models. And, uh, and all of that. And again, same review embargo date, uh, well, not review embargo, but same embargo date for that information. So, hey, I'll just throw it into this video. Uh, just, uh, there you go, there it is. Now, why am I again comparing against the 7800 XT when this is a 7900 class product? Well, again, from uh, pricing, it's, it's much closer in price to a 7800 XT than it is to a uh, $750, 7900 XT. And, uh, if you look at the specs, it's interesting because in compute units, 80 compute units on our GRE model is incredibly close to the 84 compute units on the 7900 XT. Uh, much closer than it is to the 60 compute units on a 7800 XT. So at first it might be like, wow, looking at those specs, the GRE is just absolutely the way to go. It has a nine instead of an eight and it has more compute units. But the memory systems are 256 bit on both the 7800 XT and the 7900 GRE, cut down from the 320 bit bus on the 7900 XT. And the memory speeds are slower, 20 gigabit per second on our 7900 XT, 18 gigabit per second on the 7900 GRE, reducing the memory bandwidth to 576 gigabytes per second on our GRE versus a full 800 gigabytes per second on the 7900 XT. Also, we have the power draw uh, significantly cut down to basically match our 7800 XT. However, again, I'm looking at the Power Color Hellhound uh, GRE, which does increase its power limit. I'm running it as out of the box settings, which was switched to the OC BIOS, which does run above 260 watts, as we'll see in the video. Uh, and again, so I'm also running my 7800 XT Red Devil, also again at its out of the box, you know, a uh, bit of a factory overclocked type settings. So anyway, that's what we're looking at here. So basically, I'm uh, one thing I really want to look at out for is what about ray tracing performance? Because the way AMD GPUs work is the um, uh, the ray, I think there's one ray accelerator basically per compute unit. And so more compute units would get you more of those. But uh, I think ray tracing also likes memory bandwidth and thing, things like that, which are also cut down. So I'm just curious if we run this through a variety of settings, ray tracing on, off, uh, various uh, you know levels of ray tracing, upscaling, different resolutions, uh, and a whole bunch of different uh, engines. And that's what my test suite of games is based on is I'm looking at new, pretty uh, popular and or graphically demanding games, but also from a variety of game engines, settings, things like that. Anyway, uh, let's just jump into the benchmarks. I'll make myself a tiny little mouse cursor uh, to maybe point out anything I find uh, particularly interesting as we go. And here we're seeing a 14% lead in both the averages and 1% lows at 1080p Ultra and Avatar Frontiers of Pandora. Now, one thing to keep in mind 
side about this game is that it is a ray tracing only title. So this is a ray tracing workload and at 1440p ultra we see similar results although it's about a 12% lead now in the averages versus 14% in the 1% lows but pretty similar results. And remember it's 10% more money so um, you know pretty good results. Now we are a bit below 60 FPS here. So you might not want to play at 1440p ultra, at least without upscaling. So we can kick on FSR quality. And if we do that here, we now see the lead drop to 11%. So still at least even price to performance scaling. And now performance does jump up to 79 FPS and 71 FPS respectively. Uh, on these uh, GPUs and the 1% lows are actually 14% better at 65 versus 57. So, so far, absolutely justifying the price tag increase. Now, uh, this is also one of the games with one of the newer FSR 3 frame generation implementations. So if you kick on FSR quality and then kick on frame generation, frame rates jump to 132 and 145 respectively here. 10% lead in the averages for the GRE, although we are only seeing a 4% lead in the 1% lows. Now do keep in mind uh, the, the footnote down here mentioning that high frame rates achieved through frame generation, while they do increase motion fluidity and it's often worth it, they don't look or feel the same as that high of a refresh rate experience without frame, rate, uh, frame generation being the way that you're achieving that. Anyway, if you don't want to use any upscaling or frame generation features, but you do want to play this game over 60 FPS, you can drop it to the high settings, where now we're seeing 73 FPS versus 66, which is an 11% advantage for the 7900 GRE. Now, both of these GPUs are powerful and they have 16 gigabytes of VRAM, which means you might be considering them for a 4K experience. But just be aware that if you do that, you definitely won't just be maxing games out at native 4K if you're playing the latest AAA graphically demanding games. At 4K Ultra, the GRE is good for 31 FPS, the XT is good for 28, giving an 11% advantage to the GRE, and it's a 12% lead in the 1% lows, but I think that's just not the way you would choose to play the game. So if we go up to uh, the 1440p, uh, sorry, 4K Ultra settings with FSR at its quality level, we are now seeing 48 FPS versus 44, so 9% advantage for the GRE, basically justifying its price increase, but not much more than that. Although still, playing the game in the mid 40s is certainly playable, and FSR quality does look pretty reasonable at 4K resolution. Still probably not the way I think most people would choose to play a first person shooter. So here we're trying out going with the high settings, and at 4K high settings, we have um, basically 41 FPS versus 38. 8% lead for the GRE, so it's dropping a bit below an even price to performance scaling, although not off by much. And, um, Overall, then again, though, probably not the way you choose to play the game. So really, we'd probably go to high settings and turn on upscaling. So by turning on FSR quality, again, at 4K resolution, FSR quality does look pretty good. You still have four, uh, 1440p internal resolution. And now uh, we're actually seeing a 24% advantage here, 68 versus 55. I was surprised to see this. It's certainly the largest lead we've seen. Now, if you look at the compute unit difference, it does have, I think, what is it? 33% more compute units. So it's not unreasonable that you could occasionally see a 20% or more uh, performance increase, but it was kind of a bit out of line of what we had been seeing. Now that the performance was uh, closer to the, the kind of baseline frame rate you'd want for frame generation, I am gonna show kicking that on. So 4K high with FSR quality upscaling with frame generation enabled, we're now able to hit around 100 FPS of motion fluidity on both GPUs. Only 6% more average FPS on the GRE, but at the 1% lows are a lot better at 80 versus 64. But let's go ahead and jump into another graphically demanding game with Alan Wake 2. At the 1080p high settings, we are seeing a 15% performance advantage at 102 versus 89, which again is better than an even price to performance scaling, which is nice to see. Now, I'm not sure how many people will be buying these GPUs for 1080p resolution, but um, the, uh, it certainly gets the job done here. At 1440p resolution, which I think is much more likely to be your target, actually both GPUs are once again getting the job done. We're at 67 FPS on the GRE, but even the XT is averaging out to 60 here. Uh, it gives a 12% advantage to the 7900 GRE in the averages and actually an 18% lead in the 1% lows at 47 versus 40. So, so far here in Alan Wake 2, we are more than uh, uh, delivering a 10, uh, you know, better than 10% increase in performance 
Although, what if we want to kick on ray tracing? This is a big ray tracing showcase game. However, you kick on the RT low preset, and by the way, I do have the game at its high preset, plus adding in the RT low preset. Uh, you have to kick on FSR quality to get reasonable performance here. We're at 53 versus 49, so actually only an 8% lead in the averages, but the 1% lows are actually a 31% advantage. But I just want to mention that there's some big frame time spikes going on on both of these. So neither one is particularly amazing here uh, in the 1% lows. And so um, really it's also possible that we're just seeing uh, that the, the spikes are just a bit bigger on our, our 7800 XT and both are a little bit spiky. So not an amazing experience with the uh, RT kicked in here. And if you do try going up to RT high, which is the full on uh, path tracing mode for this game, even with quality level upscaling, we're just not where we wanna be. 24 FPS versus 21 gives a 14% advantage to the GRE. The 1% lows are 11 versus nine. It's a 22% lead technically for the GRE, but guys, look at these frame time graphs, uh, which are um, not great. So basically this just isn't the way you would play the game, but the 1440p high settings still looked great and you could definitely play the game like that. Interestingly, on the frame time graphs, as we go up to 4K high settings, our frame time graphs are really, really spiky again, giving us 1% lows at 17 and 15 respectively. And the overall averages are only 35 versus 32. So this isn't a great uh, experience here, but it's also probably just not the way you would try to play the game. So we'll go ahead and kick on some upscaling. So if we go to quality level upscaling, you'll notice that while the frame time graphs are still spiky, the spikes are quite a bit smaller. It's still not great though. So for whatever reason, the 4K high settings in this game do seem to be spiky. And I've seen this on other AMD GPUs in this area of this game. Our averages are now 62 versus 54, giving a 15% lead for the GRE. And it is averaging over 60 FPS, but the 1% lows are actually down around 30. So still not an amazing experience there at 4K. But let's go ahead and move on to Cyberpunk. Uh, you can play this game at 1080p Ultra and just absolutely crank the refresh rate here, 155 versus 142 FPS. So 9% lead to the GRE in the averages there and a 10% lead in the 1% lows at 116 FPS. But again, most people would probably be buying these for at least 1440p resolution. And if we move up to that, 1440p Ultra, you're still getting a great experience on both GPUs, 102 FPS versus 95. Now this is only a 7% lead for the GRE. So again, 10% money for 7% more performance. I mean, not the end of the world there, but it's certainly not delivering the like 15% more that we were seeing in some other games. 8% more performance in the 1% lows at 80 versus 74, but honestly, both of these GPUs just crushing it at 1440p ultra. So is there enough headroom for some ray tracing? Uh, rather than go with the presets here, I try. I feel like um, if you're not gonna crank everything in the ray tracing settings in this game, the reflections are one of the more noticeable things in Cyberpunk. So I try just using the ultra pre preset, but adding RT reflections. And it's very playable. We're at 57 versus 51, and it's now a 12% lead for the 7900 GRE. So maybe we are getting a bit more out of those extra compute units than we uh, saw otherwise. Now, if you do wanna use RT reflections and get above a 60 FPS experience, kicking on FSR quality definitely does it. We're at 88 FPS and 80 respectively, which is a 10% advantage for the GRE. So again, an even performance uh, and dollar uh, increase uh, scaling there. And the 1% lows are nice here at 71 and 64 as well, 11% advantage for the GRE. So you can definitely get a very good, uh, you know, ultra plus RT reflections, kick on um, FSR quality, get a pretty good experience there. That being said, the path tracing mode, RT Overdrive, is a bit too much for either GPU to handle. Uh, so we're hitting, uh, uh, even with FSR quality enabled, 29 FPS and 24 FPS respectively. Now the compute units maybe are kicking in here. We're seeing a 21% advantage and a 20% advantage in the 1% lows, but it's not that meaningful since we just aren't getting that uh, playable performance anyway. If we go up to 4K resolution, 4K Ultra is just still incredibly difficult for most hardware out there. Um, so even uh, even without ray tracing, 4K Ultra is probably not the way you'd choose to play. It's certainly playable at 44 FPS and 41. Like, like 40 FPS doesn't feel horrible, but it's just, again, probably not the optimal settings to use here. 7% advantage for the GRE. 
Uh, if we go down to the high settings, we're getting much closer to a 60 FPS experience. 4K high is getting us to 56 FPS and 52 respectively in this built-in benchmark. 8% advantage to the GRE. So again, a bit below the like 10% you'd wanna see for an even price to performance scaling, but it's close enough that I don't think it's that big of a deal. 1% lows are 48 versus 44 advantage. And what if we wanted to crank things up? You know, it is a first person shooter style combat. So if you kick on FSR quality on the high preset, you're actually now getting a really nice smooth experience. And uh, while FSR, you know, I do criticize it versus DLSS. When you have a 4K baseline, the, the quality settings do still look pretty good here. And, and so this would be probably the way I'd end up playing the game on these GPUs if I had a 4K screen. It's only a 5% lead for the GRE though at 87 versus 83. Now let's jump into some Unreal Engine 5 testing. Here we are looking at Robocop Rogue City at 1080p epic settings. And we're getting a very good experience on both GPUs. We're seeing 104 FPS and 96 FPS respectively. So nice high refresh rate and responsive experience uh, on both of them for a first person shooter, but it's still only 1080p resolution and it's an 8% lead for the GRE. If we move up to 1440p epic settings, both GPUs are still performing well, and the 7900 GRE increases its lead to 9% in the averages, although only 5% in the 1% lows. Uh, the averages are now 71 and 65, so you've got an absolutely uh, smooth experience here. If you wanted even higher refresh rates, you could upscale or re reduce down to like the high settings, something like that, but we're well over 60 FPS here, so I think most people would be pretty fine with those. But if we move up to 4K resolution, Unreal Engine 5 is, uh, it, it's, it's performance demand scales very much with resolution. A lot of things are calculated, you know, per pixel. So here we're seeing 4K epic settings only hitting 36 FPS and 33 respectively. That is a 9% lead for the GRE and a 7% lead in the 1% lows at 32 versus 30. So, um, you know, probably not the way you'd want to play the game. However, because uh, this engine does respond so much to resolution scaling, uh, uh, you, it's, uh, if you kick on FSR quality, you do jump performance to almost 60 FPS on the GRE. We're at 58 versus 54 now, 7% advantage for the GRE. But I really hate the look of FSR in this game. It's it, like, like, if you look at the street, it's very shiny. The car grill is very uh, flickery. It's very unstable. This game has one of the uh, worst FSR implementations from an image quality perspective that I've seen. So actually what I'm gonna show you here is Unreal Engine 5 has its own upscaler, TSR, Temporal Super Resolution, and it's slightly less performant than FSR. We can see our frame rates basically dropped by two FPS on both GPUs. But I think it's well worth that two frames per second drop because you can see that it's much more stable in motion. The street doesn't flicker so much. The car grills don't flicker so much. So I would highly recommend trying out TSR if you have an Unreal Engine 5 game when you're uh, trying to upscale on an AMD GPU. Anyway, let's jump into Starfield, which has recently been updated uh, to change some of its lighting systems as well as to include um, FSR 3 frame generation. Here we're looking at 1080p Ultra and I don't think there's any frame generation needed. We're hitting 91 FPS and 83 respectively, giving a 10% advantage to the 7900 GRE. And if we move up to 1440p resolution, keep on those Ultra settings. Again, I don't think that we really need um, oh, wait a second. I, I typed in the wrong numbers here. I, 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 don't, don't look at that. That, that's wrong here. That error, error. I don't want to refilm the whole video. Uh, you can see the actual correct, uh, numbers up, up, up here. Okay. Those are the averages. <laughs> anyway, uh, don't look at that. I must've, I, I type in all those by hand. So anyway, um, Oh my, oh my goodness, did, did I not? I, I totally messed up my Starfield results. Don't, don't look at these. Cover it up, don't look. Ah, it's horrible. I, I'm so embarrassed. If, if I had more time, guys, I, I'm a teacher. I, I have only so much time to film my, my YouTube channel. Uh, look up here for the 4K Ultra results. How did I miss that, guys? I, I don't know. Um, I must have been, honestly, my kids like to play while I'm kind of uh, doing, the, the, doing the videos. Anyway. I think we're, we're good now though. So we're at 4K Ultra with FSR quality and we are now at uh, 65 FPS, uh, looks like in the averages here. So by the end of the run, okay, these look good again. Whew, okay, we're back to good numbers. So at 4K Ultra settings, you would probably wanna kick on quality level upscaling to hit around 60 frames per second. Ah, okay, all right, man. 
But if you're hitting around 60 frames per second, you might want to kick on frame generation. So here, showing off the new FSR 3 frame generation that's been added to the game, now getting you over 100 FPS of motion fluidity, although not responsiveness, so do keep that in mind. And again, it can introduce some of its own stuff. Speaking of my kids playing, sorry for all the noise you're probably hearing upstairs with things banging on the roof and all that. The important thing here is we're seeing an 11% advantage for the GRE, and both of them are giving a good experience now with those settings. Let's go ahead and jump into RE Engine. This is Resident Evil 4 Remake, and at 1080p max settings, which does include ray tracing, although it's just a pretty grainy looking RT reflections, if we're being honest, uh, we're seeing a 7% advantage for the GRE, but both of them are delivering a very high refresh rate experience here at 136 versus 127, totally maxed out. But again, that is only 1080p resolution. If we move over to 1440p max settings, uh, we are now seeing, again, a 7% advantage for the GRE, but it's now 112 versus 104, so overall frame rates are lower, but they're still very, very high. Uh, over 100 FPS on both GPUs, getting a pretty great experience, I would say. Although, I'm going to be honest, guys, I, I thought the RT reflections were grainy enough that personally I actually turned them off when I played the game. I also turned off the grainy screen space reflections because I feel like the, the, the cube maps in this game are the only ones that aren't distractingly grainy looking. But that's just personal preference. Anyway, if we go up to 4K max settings, we're still getting good, uh, good results, 71 and 65 FPS respectively. Uh, and it's a 9% advantage for that um, 7900 GRE. But let's go ahead and move on to the um, uh, prioritize graphics preset. Because I do want to say that if you do want to turn off the ray tracing, turn a couple other little things down, prioritize graphics don't look that much different. And you do get in a lot more performance. And we're at 87 versus 78 now by the end of this run, which is a 12% advantage for the 7900 GRE. Um, versus the 7800 XT here. So uh, again, delivering very good results here. Not, that's not even upscaling. So this RE Engine games can be pretty performant. Now I did want to take a look at some like PS5 style games, which can be very memory bandwidth heavy and things like that. And if we look at Ratchet and Clank, at the 4K very high settings, uh, the, I'm noticing the 7900 GRE is only 3% ahead of the 7800 XT. And again, like I said, um, I feel like a lot of these PS5 ported over games can be, like I said, very memory bandwidth heavy when I look at the uh, performance. They also just use a lot of VRAM in general. Uh, so uh, if we do kick on FSR quality, we now see 93 FPS versus 90. We're seeing a larger difference in the 1% lows, but both of them get little frame time spikes a lot of times when the scene changes, and they get those same frame time spikes at, at the same times. Um, but it looks like the frame time spikes are just a little bit higher on the 7800 XT, which is kind of interesting. I uh, don't know if that's just kind of more run-to-run -run variants or if actually those differences in hardware are meaning much there. At 1440p resolution, you just get really high frame rates. So I'm actually trying out the RT settings at 1440p here. If we go to RT high, we're still able to get 69 nice on the 7900 GRE, which is a 6% lead over the 65 FPS on the 7800 XT, and the 1% lows are a 10% advantage at 55 versus 50. So you actually do get a pretty decent experience there. And if you're uh, wanting to kick on FSR quality at 1440p with RT high, uh, we can actually bump to a pretty high refresh rate experience at 95 versus 90. Although I would mention that this game also has XCSS upscaling, and you might actually consider using that over the FSR upscaling in this game, uh, because I think uh, it's, it's, it can be a little bit less pixelated in motion if you go with the XCSS option, but it is also less performant. So there is a bit of a trade-off there. Now, uh, Baldur's Gate 3, I'm mostly throwing this in because, hey, it's another engine to look at. It's a, it's a very, very, very popular new game. Um, but it's not super demanding on graphics cards. 1080p is just totally CPU limited. And honestly here, at, even at 1440p Ultra, we're mostly CPU limited here, hitting 115 FPS versus 110. Uh, only showing a 5% advantage, but again, we're somewhat CPU limited. If we move up to 4K Ultra, both GPUs are still doing great, but we are able to see the GRE pull 11% ahead here at 71 versus 64, and 13% ahead in the 1% lows at 45 versus 40. 
So overall, uh, again, when not CPU limited, we are getting pretty good results here. I do notice these little like intermittent frame time spikes though on both of them. It's kind of weird. I, I've noticed though, if you do kind of uh, V-sync to like 60 or hit a frame, uh, frame rate limiter, you can kind of smooth those out. I think we'll end here with Call of Duty Modern Warfare 3. At 1080p basic settings, um, it's basically 299 FPS versus 312, and they're tied in the 1% lows at about 200. So the point is, both of them deliver uh, a, an extremely high refresh rate experience, so if you're not getting the kill, it's your fault, not the hardware. I'm sorry, you just need to accept that. At 1440p basic settings, and by the way, I'm using basic settings because I think that's more representative of somebody who's really wanting to chase the high refresh rate experience in this kind of game for that competitive edge. Anyway, you're hitting 243 FPS versus 234, so 4% leading the averages, although the 1% lows separate, but they're not separated yet. It happens right here during the explosion right at the end. So right here at this explosion, boom, notice that the 1% um, the lows did hit right there at the end. And that's where we're seeing that larger separation. That happens again here at the 4K resolution, where when the explosion hits at the end, I see more separation in the 1% lows, but during the normal run, they're actually much closer together. Um, anyway, both of them still delivering a, an, a pretty high refresh rate experience at 4K here, 147 FPS versus 140. So that would max out most people's 4K displays, which are probably only going up to 120 or 144, unless you're getting one of those new... Uh, uh, those new ones out there that are launching, you know, they got those new 4K 240 hertz OLEDs coming out. Anyway, so what do I think overall? Like I said, overall, it is a 10% price increase to get the 7900 GRE. And I think if we go ahead and kind of scroll back through the results, is it always delivering? Again, you're going to kind of look over here at this, this, this percentage difference. And remember, ignore the Starfield results where apparently I'm, I'm just like an idiot and just forgot to type in the numbers and calculate the percentages and whatever. Uh, but the point is, if we look at this, is it always delivering 10% uh, better? No, sometimes it's only like 5 or 8% somewhere around there but it's frequently around that or even better, right? We did see some games going up to 15% or even more. 10% is a pretty common result. So what would be the actual difference? Well, you know, it completely depends on the set of games and the, set and the graphic settings and resolutions and whatever that you test. But I think we can safely say it's at least close to a 10% or frequently even uh, a 15% performance uplift uh, getting the GRE model. So I think basically if it's in your budget and you're considering an AMD GPU in the $500-ish price point, I do think it makes sense to get the GRE over the XT. But if you don't have the extra 50 bucks, they're offering a very similar experience, and it is, again, close to an even price to performance scaling. So I don't think the 7800 XT is like a bad deal or anything, and you don't need to be totally upset if you bought one of those for 500 bucks, and now we've got this one for 550, you know? And if you're more interested in how these stack up against uh, NVIDIA competition, because we have like the 4070, uh, which is currently available as low as $530, although its MSRP is 550, that puts it kind of right between these two, right? And it's 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 right there. An official MSRP is next to the, uh, the that five hundred and fifty dollar um, seventy nine hundred GRE. And then there's also the forty seventy super, where it's like, ah, is it worth paying you know fifty dollars more uh, to grab one of these for six hundred dollars? And so uh, if, if those are your questions, I have some upcoming videos, again, head-to-head -head comparisons at, in all of these new games with lots of settings. Again, we will look at DLSS and, and frame generation and all of that head-to-head -head against these. So that is incoming on the channel. So stay tuned for the GRE versus the 4070 and the 4070 Super. Uh, in-depth head-to-head comparisons and all that. And by the way, just huge thank you to viewers, subscribers, commenters, and especially channel members who click the join button to directly support the channel financially. Uh, when I'm running all these GPU tests and things like that, uh, some of my motivation is knowing people actually value that level of in-depth testing, playing with the settings to actually get to settings you might actually use the GPUs on rather than just cranking everything to alter and calling it a day. Uh, anyway, um, so huge thank you to people who click the join button to directly support financially. I know not everybody's in a position to do that, so that is totally fine and absolutely no pressure to do that. If you do, you do get little member badges and things in the comment section. It's easier for me to find your comments as well. Uh, some of my videos do uh, come up available for early access on channel members as well, things like that. So anyway, huge thank you to everybody. Hope all of you have an excellent day.